Here we have a graph of position as a function of time. Always when you look at a graph, uh, be sure the first thing you do is to look at the axes and make sure you know what you're looking at. So this is position in meters as a function of time in seconds. All right, so this is a graph of the motion of an elevator as it rises up inside an elevator shaft, say going from the first floor to the third floor or something like that. So here we go from zero to one second. We see the position of the elevator is not changing. So that means the elevator is stationary. Then from one to three seconds, we see the elevator starts to move up the shaft. And from three to eight seconds, it's moving up the shaft still. And from eight to nine seconds, it's moving up the shaft. And then from nine seconds onward, we see that it is stationary again. There is something about this graph that uh, tells us information about how fast the elevator is moving. Uh, velocity is the rate at which position changes. So we can see here, we get some change in position from zero meters to four meters over a time period of two seconds. So we could calculate what is the velocity. We know that the velocity is the change in the position over the amount of time it takes to do that. So in this region, we see the slope of the graph is zero. That means the change in the position is zero because slope is change in whatever's on the y-axis divided by change in whatever's on the x-axis. So change in position over change in time is velocity. So the slope here is zero. So the velocity is zero. Here we see the slope of the graph is changing. It's increasing from a slope of zero to some positive value. So that means the velocity of the elevator is changing. It is increasing just as the slope of this part of the graph is increasing. Then from three seconds to eight seconds or from point B to point C, the slope of the graph is a constant value. That tells us that the velocity of the elevator is constant, some constant positive value during this time. Then in the time from C or from eight seconds to nine seconds, we see the slope of the graph is decreasing. That tells us that the velocity of the elevator is changing and decreasing. And from nine seconds on, the slope of the graph is zero. So we have zero velocity. So let's generate the velocity graph as a function of time from the information given to us in the position versus time graph. We know that the velocity is the slope of the graph because velocity is change in position over change in time, average velocity is. And we know that since position is on the y-axis and time is on the x-axis, that the slope of the graph is delta position over delta time. So from zero to one, the slope was zero. Here's the calculation. My position at zero, my final position is at zero. My initial position is at zero. So final minus initial gives me a change in position over uh, of zero over the time, one minus zero seconds. Sure, the slope is zero in the region from zero to one seconds. Let's look at the region from three to eight seconds. The final position is 24 meters. The initial position is four meters. So our change in position is 24 minus four or 20. And the change in time is from three to eight. So eight minus three, five seconds. So my velocity during this time is four meters per second. So in the graph from B to C, from three to eight seconds, my velocity is a constant four meters per second. And from zero to one is a constant zero meters per second. I just connected my points at uh, velocity equals zero and velocity equals four, I just connected it with a straight line. How did I know that the slope of this graph was increasing at a constant rate indicating indicated by this straight line here? The answer is I didn't. Uh, you can't just eyeball that and tell that it's a constant increase in velocity, but usually uh, the problem will let you know if that's the case, okay? And then again, after nine seconds, my change in position is zero, so my slope is zero. It's also worth noting 
that here this, all these slopes are positive. So all my velocity values are also positive. A positive slope corresponds to a positive velocity. Even though it's not shown here, a negative slope would correspond to a negative velocity. What if we wanted to work backwards to go from the velocity graph and get the position graph given the velocity graph? Well, we know that the value of the velocity graph everywhere is the slope of the position graph. So we could uh, look at this and see that the value of the velocity is 4. So I know the slope of this region of the graph is 4. The uh, value of the velocity is 0, so the slope is 0. The value of the velocity is 0, so the slope is 0. But what I can't know is where is this graph vertically? Right? Just because this has a slope of 0, this has a slope of 4, and this has a slope of 0, that does not tell me that the graph starts at a position of x equals 0. The graph could have been starting here and have the same shape, right? And I, I can't get that information of where the graph is vertically from this graph. The only way I, I can know where it is here is if the problem gives me some more information. Usually we call that the initial conditions. So for example, if the problem said, the, the excuse me, at the, the problem says that the particle or the elevator is at x equals zero at time equals zero, then I know where this graph is located vertically and I can generate the graph with numbers on this side. If that information isn't given, all I know is the change in position. So I could get the shape of this graph which shows me how much the position changes from one time to another, but I wouldn't know where it is vertically. Okay, let's, uh, there's something else that we can get from this graph to know about, uh, to give us information about the position graph. And let's start off with our equation for uh, displacement. I know that an object moves with some displacement, and that's equal to its average velocity times time. Okay, let's start with this region right here. The average velocity during the time from 3 to 8 seconds is 4 meters per second. It's not changing at all. So this equation changes to just velocity times time. If the velocity isn't changing, the average velocity is, in this case, 4 meters per second. And the time which it travels is from uh, 8 to 3, that's 5 seconds. So I'll multiply that times 5 seconds, and I see that the distance the object travels is 4 times 5, 20 meters. You can see the units work out. Okay? And if I look at my graph, I see from 3 to 8 seconds, it started at 4 meters, and it ended up at 24 meters. So it did in fact move 20 meters. Okay? So it agrees. And the way I can, if I look at this graph, I see that. So uh, I notice the velocity is the height of this rectangle, and the time is the base of this rectangle. So the area of that rectangle is 20 meters, and you see the units works out too. The height is 4 meters per second, and the, the base is 5 seconds, and so the area of that uh, region is 20 meters. So I look at this rectangle and I see that the area under the curve is the change in position. The area under this curve is the change in position. 20 meters from 4 to 24 meters, that's a change of 20 meters. Let's take a look at another section of the graph. How about this section of the graph here? If I look at the area under that portion of the graph, I see that that's a triangle. I know that the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height, right? So the base is the time, 3 minus 1, the base is 2 seconds. 
and the height is 4 meters per second. And multiply it by 1 half. Uh, 4 times 2 is 8 times 1 half is 4 meters. Okay? So the area of this green triangle is 4 meters. And I look over here and I see in the time from 1 to 3 seconds, I go from position of 0 to a position of 4. So that is a change in position of 4 meters. So bottom line is the area under the velocity versus time graph tells me the change in position. Here we're looking at the velocity time graph, and we can generate from that the acceleration time graph in the same way that we generated the velocity graph from the displacement graph. We know that acceleration is the rate of change of velocity, so that means the acceleration is the slope of the velocity time graph. So slope of zero, acceleration of zero. Here the slope is change in y of 4 over change in x of 2. 4 divided by 2 is positive 2. So you see an acceleration of positive 2, a slope of 0 in this region, and acceleration of 0 in this region. And then here, the decrease in velocity occurs over 1 second, whereas the increase occurred over 2 seconds. So I have a steeper slope. It's 4 divided by 1, but it's... Uh, negative 4. The final velocity is 0. The initial velocity is 4. So 0 minus 4 is negative 4. This is a negative slope of 4. And so my acceleration is a negative value of 4 meters per second squared, uh, also called a deceleration. Also, uh, the same holds true. The, uh, the area under the velocity curve was the displacement. The area under the acceleration curve is the change in velocity. So I see here the area under this portion of the curve. It's a height of 2 and a base of 2. So the area of that rectangle is positive 4. And my velocity changes from 0 to positive 4, a change of positive 4. Over here, my acceleration uh, graph shows an area under the curve of a negative area when it's below the uh, time axis, it's a negative area. When it's above the time axis, it's a positive area. So this is 1 times 4, or an area of negative 4. And up here, my velocity changes from 4 to 0. 0 minus 4 is negative 4. The change is negative 4, corresponding to the area of negative 4. Now, these little pictures down here in your textbook shows you how your body might feel in the elevator during the positive acceleration phase, you feel like you're being squished down. During the uh, zero acceleration or moving at constant velocity of four meters per second, your body feels normal. And during the negative acceleration phase, when the, ex uh, when the elevator slows down, you feel lit like you're being lifted up, like you're lighter. Uh, so your body is in the drawing is stretched a little bit. And then after the elevator stops, you feel back to normal again. Instead of just relying on these pictures, we thought, I, uh, we thought we'd go into an elevator and try this ourselves and use a spring, a weight on a spring, to show you this squishing feeling and this lighter feeling. So here's the setup we'll use. I've got a spring and a 50 gram mass hanging from it and a pencil uh, just to mark where its starting position is. And uh, this, the mass, of course, can bounce up and down on the spring. So when the elevator starts, what we'll see is that the weight f feels heavier than it really is, and so the spring will stretch downward. And then I'll s stop it from oscillating, and when it reaches the top and the elevator stops, we'll see that the mass appears lighter than it actually is, and will rise up. Okay, so we're in the elevator. The door is closing. We're getting ready to go up. And the elevator starts, and we saw the weight push down. It seemed heavier than it was. While the elevator is moving at a constant velocity, the weight stays in its normal position. And when we get to the top, you see and slows down, the weight rises.